Hello, race fans. I'm Chris Terrell. I'm here at RollerPros.com. Here we my DFS preview of the Quaker State 400 from Kentucky Speedway. So this week is a little bit different. Um, it is an impound race, so practices, both practices and qualifying were yesterday. Um, so we've got that information loaded on the sheet. We're going to go over that here in a bit. Um, today's inspection is going to start about 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, it's going to take about two hours before we're going to know an official start in lineup. The good news is that they're going to start at uh, um, the qualifiers 1 through 36. or 36 cars in the field this week. So we're going to know at least the starting guys uh, right off the bat. So we've got that. So I'm going to be going live also around that time. It'll be around 4 to 4.30 p.m. Eastern once that inspection's over just to go over any changes, answer some questions. So make sure to tune in for that as well. So this week's race is the sixth race on a mile and a half track this season using the 2019 rules package. So every intermediate track, mile and a half track so far this season has used the 2019 rules package. That is the lower down force um, with the air ducts, the rear spoiler, the tapered space for the 550 horsepower, except for Atlanta. Atlanta didn't use the air ducts. They were more of a brake duct. So I, I've excluded them a little bit. Um, but what I have done is add those other five races. We went over this last time, so I've had this updated now. We've got finish position for each driver at each race, wins, top fives, top tens, average finish of those five races, FanDuel points and DraftKings points. And then something I wanted to look at as well was the laps led leaders, like for dominators and such. So the first two races, Vegas and Texas, we've seen at least seven drivers lead 10 plus laps, the same for the first four races actually. And then we've seen um, three or more drivers lead 20 plus laps in three of the first four. None leading 100 plus laps in those first two races. Things changed at Kansas where we've seen, again, two drivers have led 50 plus in every single race in these intermediates, but we've seen a driver lead 75 plus. Um, he actually led 100 at Kansas. And then at Charlotte, it is an extra 100 miles in that race, so not crazy to see that we had a hundred plus lap leader in that race but then again at Chicago we've seen the same thing there so uh, it looks like a trend that teams are tr starting to figure things out as the guys that are starting at the front of the pack are now being able to get out front and stay out front and lead a bunch of laps in these races show that they have a dominant car this season was a little bit different just because what they're qualifying with and once it's impounded they are starting the race with what they qualified with so Usually you see those cars that are starting up front, they're going to get up front, they're going to lead some laps, they're going to have the best cars early in the stage. We do see other drivers come along throughout the race and, and definitely lead some laps who make you know the right adjustments throughout the race and stuff like that. So just a little bit more information that you can go over. I've also got, of those five races, we've got the lap leaders and fast laps. So we're going to touch on that here in a bit as well. And then, of course, we've got the last six races at Kentucky. There's only been eight races here. We'll look at them here at racingreference.info. Um, 2011 was the first cup race here. We've only seen four different drivers in the eight races, as you can see. Um, it has been won. The race winner has won from the pole three of the eight races, has won from the front row five of the eight races, and top ten and seven of the eight races. So track position has always been huge here. It's why we do see a lot of dominators here. Um, this week's going to be a little bit different. Again, add the fact that NASCAR... Um, and the track Kentucky Speedway have added the PJ1 compound. You'll see it if you watch any practice or qualifying that, that dark stuff on the track. It's just like a sticky compound. It's got many different names. What it's doing is creating more grip for the drivers to possibly create more lanes for passing and a little bit better racing. So um, this race could be a little bit different. Turns one and two, they didn't put any on the bottom, so it appears to be still the favored line. Um, You've seen that a little bit. It actually opened up a little bit in the Xfinity race. Guys were going to the outside and making it work. Um, so we might definitely see that. According to Kevin Harvick, even with the no PJ1 at the bottom of turns one and two, he said guaranteed when you're restarting, the guy is going to want to start on the outside. Um, but he said once you get into the run a little bit, uh, the inside could become a little bit more dominant in one and two. Okay, so we got that PJ1. It's going to change things a little bit. We don't know exactly. Um, there's going to be a lot of adjustments. Like when we go look at the, the main cheat sheet here and look at practice times, Truex didn't even run a 10 lap average in either practice. So he may be relying a little bit more. He's going to be a GPP play for me anyway this week just because he's been inconsistent. He's shown tons of upside. He's got three wins, 
um, already, but he he has been very inconsistent on a week to week basis, which makes him more of a GPP play. He's won the last two races here. I think things are going to be a little bit different. He showed a little bit better practice speeds going into those races than this one. So that's kind of what I lean him to uh, GPP only this week. Harvick I like, and all these picks that I'm talking about here right now are going to be tentative because we haven't seen the inspection. Um, what's going to happen with that inspection? Let's just say Kevin Harvick um, starting fifth. He fails inspection once. He loses his qualifying time. He will now start at the back of the field um, behind everyone else that passes the tech. So if, and then if five drivers fail tech, they will line up at the back of the pack in front of behind all the drivers that pass tech and they will line up according to owner's points. So if Harvick's the highest in owner points, he'll, you know, there's 36, there's five of them, he'll start 31st, whereas, say, if Corey LaJoy is one of those drivers that uh, fails inspection, he would go right to the back because he'd be lower in owner's points. So that's how the inspection's going to work. So it's going to be crucial, and that will change the DFS starting position as well on FanDuel and DraftKings, so keep that in mind. So just a couple core drivers uh, this week that I am looking at. <clears throat> Talked about Truex as a GPP play. Kevin Harvick's number one in my model. Um, he's starting fifth, and he showed a ton of speed here. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. He was eighth in first practice, ninth in 10 lap hours. Nothing special there. Top 10 car. Really improved it for final practice. He was second in one lap times, third in 10 lap averages. I think he's got a car that can get out front. And the other thing that I like is, um, while he hasn't been the best here, he hasn't won here yet. Um, in the eight race. He's not one of those four drivers that's won here. He's been very, very consistent. He's got top tens in six straight. He got his first top five here last year. And then you start looking at the package. This year's package, he has the fourth best, uh, fifth best average finish. Um, top tens at Vegas, Texas, and Charlotte. No finish worse than 14th, which was Chicago. But um, he probably could have had a couple wins in those races. He's been a dominator. Most definitely, he led 88 at Vegas, he led 104 at Kansas, and he led 132 at Chicago for 338 laps, many more <laughs> than Alex Bowman in second. He's also had 171 fast laps, so he's definitely looking at him as a dominator. If he's going to get his first win, it's going to be at one of these tracks, intermediate tracks, with the 2019 rules package, in my opinion. Could be as close as this week. They just need to put a whole complete race together. I think he can lead a lot of laps, win the race. So as long as he stays in that fifth start in position, um, well, if he was to fail inspection and go to the back, he's going to be super chalk anyway. Um, so I kind of prefer that he stays in fifth and maybe lowers his ownership a little bit. But he's definitely a core play for me. Brad Kozlowski can never come to Kentucky without talking about Kozlowski. He's won three. Um, let's just go look at his stats here. He's won three of the races here. He's had two finishes outside of 30s, but the other ones have been spectacular, 7th or better in the other six races with three wins. He's been dominant here. He's led laps in all but two races, and as you can see, he's led 60 or more laps in five of the races. So he's got potential to be a dominator. Then you start looking at his practice times. He was 7th and 3rd first practice. He was the fastest in the second practice and 4th and 10 lap averages. So he's, a, he's at least, you know, I would say his downside, barring any technical issues, um, you know, engine, um, drivetrain, that sort of thing, penalties, that that kind of stuff crashes. Uh, he's at least, I think, bottom top five car, top six car, easily with that winning upside. So um, as the fifth most expensive driver on DraftKings, I think we need to get exposure to Kozlowski as a core play this week. Denny Hamlin and Eric Jones, um, as you can see, I'm really gonna, I am really really like the Toyotas um, here this week. Hamlin starting 18th, Jones starting 21st. They're both giving you place differential upside. They both, um, Hamlin especially, showed top five upside in final practice in both one and 10 lap averages and also in first practice in 10 lap averages. So it looks like he's got a fast long run car. Eric Jones not as good in practice. Uh, the 10 lap averages were barely top 10 uh, in the final practice, 17th in the first practice. He was, you know, his, his short run speed um, was definitely good uh, top 10 but starting 21st at place differential even if he is an 8th to 12th place car that's enough points to make up for 8900 on DraftKings especially on FanDuel at 8800 I like him a lot more over there but I will be using him as a core play on both sites Jimmy Johnson I was hoping he'd start you know outside the top 15 but I will take 13th I'm um, gonna look at his track record here real quick 
Yeah, so nothing special. 14th last year after a 32nd and 40th the year before. He started out his career with five straight top tens here, so he has seen um, third in his very first start here back in the inaugural race in 2011. So he has seen some success here. He's been better lately. They come in with some motivation, back-to-back -to -back top fives. He's been running pretty good now. He's up in the inside the playoff bubble in the standings. And starting 13th, I don't think he's going to be a top five car this week. But again, I think he's probably going to run 5th to 10th, looking at his practice times. Um, fourth in the first practice, 16th and 10 lap averages, and then 12th in final practice, but top 10, 10 lap average. I think they're probably more like a 10th place car, 10th, 11th place car um, with upside. So I, th I think he's a little bit more on the GPP side for me, but 8,100 on DraftKings with a little bit of place differential there. Um, I definitely like him, and he's under 10K on, on FanDuel. On FanDuel, I mean in that same range. I'm looking a little bit more like Eric Almarola. Uh, Ryan Newman's been running pretty good lately. He's got some place differential upside. And then for GPP, going down just a little bit more, Suarez is starting on the pole. He's only led something like, I think, 13 laps on intermediates this season um, out of the six races, seven races if you include Atlanta. I don't... He showed a ton of speed. He was 8th in final practice, 1st in 10 lap averages, 3rd in first practice, 8th in 10 lap averages. Showing a ton of speed. I just don't think, I think Harvick gets up there and eventually gets by him within, you know, 10 to 20 laps and, and becomes the dominator. I don't know if Suarez is going to get enough laps led. I like him a little bit more on FanDuel just because if he doesn't get out and lead a ton of laps, but he's still a top 5 Six seventh place car or something like that. Um, it's not as damaging on the place differential side of things on FanDuel as it is on DraftKings. So I think he's he's a better play on FanDuel. If you think he's going to lead a ton of laps, if you think he's going to lead 50 plus laps and be one of those dominator drivers, um, maybe lead the whole first stage, get out front and show that fast car early. I would definitely jump on him at 7600 on DraftKings um, in in all formats. I just don't think he's going to lead more than 20 25 laps. Um, if that, I think that's kind of his upside just with um, how much I like Harvick and Kozlowski who are going to be coming hard inside the top five to get up there and get that lead as well. So I just don't think that he's going to be a dominator, so he's GPP only for me. Um, would pretty close to all formats on FanDuel at that price. So that's just a couple of my core drivers this week. Um, went over a little bit of the, you know, the PJ1. Um, we went over some of the 2019 rules package stuff, some of the intermediates. If you have any questions, definitely hit me up um, below in the comments. Hit me up on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs nine, or hit me up in the Roto Pros member chat room, our Slack chat channel. And again, if you're not a member, get over there, uh, RotoPros.com. Sign up today. You get we have weekly, monthly, and yearly memberships. You can come in, get your free trial, see what we're all about then decide on your membership after that. Thanks for watching the video. Again, stay tuned for about 4 to 4.30 p.m. Eastern today. I will be going live. I'll be sharing the link on Twitter and in the chat as well. Let's go get some green screens, everyone. Good luck.